Welcome to Sheena Power Talk Youth Link, where our redeemed, revived, and transformed guest gets real and empowered youths. I'm your host, Sheena Lynn Hansen, and I'm so happy to be here with you today, where I know that God is going to move in a supernatural way. Today, I pray that God's divinity will hit your humanity and that your life will never be the same. As we are here today, we have no other than Minister Renee Stewart with us, and she's our amazing gospel artist who is going to share her story today that's going to melt your heart and believe in God. Go get your aunties, your uncles, your brothers and your sisters, and stay tuned. We'll be right back. Sheena Power Talk. And we are rise and take over territory. We are break some curses lyrically. We are shake some kingdom literally. Now nah, show Satan no sympathy. Young people make we grow spiritually. Stop war with the neighbor physically. Draw for the Holy Bible daily. Humble I got feet like baby. Tire for the family in a cemetery. Youths them need guidance mentally. Stop abuse young girls sexually. We need Yeshua in the industry. Satan a try rally you your destiny. Young girl, keep your identity. Welcome, 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 woman of God. How are you? I'm awesome, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here today. Amen. As a matter of fact, you look beautiful. Thank you. You're glowing. We see the grace of God all over you. So I want you to look into the camera and give me five significant things about yourself. Okay, I consider myself to be um, non judgmental. It's extremely important to me. Empathetic, um, kind, loyal, and most of all, God fearing. Amen. God fearing, and everybody loves a God fearing woman and a man. And I can assume your husband, God loves you. <laughs> Amen. I do believe that the Bible is the foundation of truth. Number one, I love the Bible. What's your favorite scripture and what it means to you? All right, Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. And it means more to me now than when I was a child and I chose that verse because as you go through the different turmoils that life can carry you find that you need to trust in God in order to make it through this life sanely that's the only way I think we can make it through with our sanity and becoming who it is that he wants us to become by trusting and leaning on him Amen. Glory to God. I love that scripture as a matter of fact. Renee, we know that you're a gospel artist. You are a woman of God. Mm -hmm. Strongly believe in your father. And I want to know who was Renee before salvation? Um, I grew up in the church. Grew up in a pastor's house. Grew up basically knowing myself as a Christian. Mm -hmm. um, because it was exemplified before me through my mother and my father. It was something that I saw that I wanted for myself mm -hmm. because they set such a good example for me. So I didn't grow up as a non-Christian before. And then, you know, I always saw what I wanted and went after it. Um, and at the age of uh, probably about seven-ish, mm -hmm. I wanted to be baptized because my brother was being baptized and they told me no because they wanted to ensure that when I did go and do my baptism, it was because I had that conviction. But I was as serious as a heart attack. Yeah. But I respect them for their decision mm -hmm. because it taught me a really good lesson mm -hmm. that goes with me through life. Glory to God. So growing in the church, you have not been exposed to like, I'd say a dance hall or mm -hmm. a certain type of lifestyle. You mm -hmm. have not been exposed to those things. No, not exposed directly, just by living in the society. That's the only observation I have of seeing what goes on around me. But in my household, uh -uh. I never took part. No. How, how is it that you stood your grounds with that, even through school and everything? Because you were a Christian all your life. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I've not stepped away. It might make it a little error, but how you stand? Because I believe in what I saw. I believed I knew what right and wrong was. Mm -hmm. I believed doing the right thing was the right thing mm -hmm. so i had the conviction it wasn't like somebody was forcing it on me i saw i i knew the word mm -hmm. saw the word wanted to be the word so it wasn't like like that for me you know mm -hmm. so did your christian life impact the children around you are in school or in college yeah i'm sure persons were inspired um <laughs> I think some persons wanted to be like me, even though they opposed me and they behaved like the worst way in front of me. But 
by observation, you could see that they really probably emulated me, mm -hmm. but they just weren't going to make it known, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Well, and, and going forward from that, you have never turned your back on God. You continued mm -hmm. and continued. Now, as you continued in your great salvation, how was it and how has it been? What are the challenges? How you overcome? All right, first of all, let me make it extremely clear. I have earned. I'm not perfect. Yeah. I have, I might not have backslidden, but yeah. I've made my fair share of mistakes. Uh -huh. um, just want to make persons know that persons in the church struggle just as much as a person out there in the road mm -hmm. that didn't know God before they came into the church. By no stretch of the imagination are we perfect. We go through the struggles just like you, but we just learn to navigate them mm -hmm. using the Bible, using the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and we get through. Um, yeah, so there were times when I struggled with things like suicidal tendencies, um, different emotional issues, mm -hmm. but you know, over time and by the grace of God, we get through them. Mm -hmm. But going forward, one of the things I want to kind of more go in depth in is mm -hmm. that when I got married and I started facing, I knew from when I was in high school, by the way, that um, I'd probably have issues with infertility because I was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome. And I must ask, did you see symptoms in high school? Yeah, because my periods were irregular mm -hmm. so that would have been the first indicator so so so, so if, if someone is listening to us now mm -hmm. that you know speculating that the first thing is irregular periods mm -hmm. well that's one of the things and um it's been big in the media these days where they, they keep telling you that if you have painful periods it's not normal if you have really painful it should be a little bit uncomfortable but pain is a sign that something more is going on so mm -hmm. I always get it checked out as a female just keep that at the forefront of your mind, speak to your doctor about it, get a diagnosis, and see where you go from there. So at school, you realized that, and you had this image, at this thought that you wanted kids. Oh yeah, and, from and early. From very early, mm -hmm. and you were thinking that maybe it wouldn't be possible? Yeah, um, I remember growing up, my friends, people always said to help me love children, I have have none, and I hate when people do that sort of thing, because you probably, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yeah. I don't like it, so I always try to end up cursing whatever negative thing is spoken over me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it kind of in the back of your mind, people keep saying it, and then I knew that this issue was there. I'm like, you know, so something going to happen later on in life. But it did start to uh, manifest itself because as I got married, the first um, about six and a half years or so, it was just like, nothing was happening no. we were never no we were never opposed to having a child from the very beginning of our marriage until the time when we had a child and it just never happened you tried and tried oh yeah but it just it was at one point in time we were going to the guy until we got tired because like we're taking medication and stuff and still not happening so we just stopped because you know you get discouraged mm -hmm. so i just stopped for a while what was your husband to support um because of this frustration Oh Lord, my husband is a different type of husband. <laughs> he's not one of them man of God who speak faith and whatever, whatever. No, he's one of them man that will lick his wounds in private. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of them in our society. He licks his wounds in private. Where he does try to be encouraging, he really does feel it. Because then again, and one of the things I want to highlight is the way other persons respond to the situation. Like, you see a person, a young person, and they're not married at the age of 22. People start, when are you getting married? Mm -hmm. You know, that sort of thing. And it's so insensitive. Mm -hmm. Um... And when you get married, everybody's, so when you gonna have your picnic? Mm -hmm. And then every, the people were on his case, like his friends were on his case, but I'm going to put you on the truck, you know, the truck meaning the persons who don't have any kids. Yeah. We're going to put you on the truck and send you over the gully and then sort of thing. And it, it hurt him. He laughed about it yeah. in front of you, you know, because we're like that as humans. We laugh in front of you and then we go home mm -hmm. and it breaks our hearts because his desire was to have a child as well. He mm -hmm. honestly wanted to have a son, especially. Mm -hmm. So it broke his heart. So I know he was dealing with a lot and then having to deal with it from my end and then as the person going through it and knowing that it's your diagnosis, you carry a lot of guilt. Mm -hmm. My question to you is though, when you were, you know, like courting, did you suggest that you were dealing with this PC? Definitely. I, I would not have gone into marriage without telling him. So I did tell him, he did his research and he also consulted God about it. God did promise him that he'd have a son. Mm. That never made the struggle any easier. Ooh. No. Sometimes it's like that, isn't it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God tell you you're going to get it, but it's the fight that, yeah. that comes with it. Yeah, because sometimes you second guess yourself and second guess whether it was God who told you mm -hmm. and all of these things. So sometimes it doesn't really make the struggle any easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, woman of God. Yeah, so we 
struggle time. We, yeah, and we were on medication and stuff like that, and nothing was happening. So our doctor recommended that, that we went to see a fertility specialist in Kingston. Mm -hmm. So we went and we saw the doctor, and I did not want to go to Kingston. Mm -hmm. My biggest fear was that I was going to have a child that was labeled as um, artif being born out of an artificial insemination or IVF. I didn't want people to call my child a test tube baby. Mm -hmm. And respect and manners to everybody who go through it and have their baby through that medium. Mm -hmm. I just never want that for my child. I never want that from the introduction of his life. You understand? I didn't want a stereotype hanging over his head. So I fight God over it for years. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not going. And him keep on, him say, go. He said, God, give me a miracle. Him say, go. Mm -hmm. So eventually, I gave up and I didn't fight anymore and I went. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that he's just going to go ahead and just start this process, you understand? But he went through all of the, the different things on the file and the diagnosis and everything. And the possible, I don't even think he went as far as artificial insemination. And like, if I don't even think he talked about that none at all. He gave me a new medication that I hadn't taken before. Mm -hmm. And he sent me home. Support, look, a confuse me. <laughs> like, really? This is the, okay. So I went home. So just, you, you were confused based on the fact that you just keep your a tap? Yes, I'm like, okay, this is like a continuation of, okay, of what was before. Yes, it's different, but I mean, I expect nothing different. You understand? I just think, okay, it's a step and it's going to lead to another step to another step. Mm -hmm. So I just go through the process. Mm -hmm. I went home. Oh, he explained to me that what would have to happen this time, though, is that you monitor the growth of the eggs by ultrasound. Yeah. So you know, you take this tablet, mm -hmm. you, you you get your period, you take the tablet, and then you monitor the growth and the maturity of the follicles, yeah. which we call eggs. And based on the maturity mm -hmm. date or the, late, the level of maturity of the egg, then you get an injection now to cause them to release and be fertilized and implanted, whatever. Mm -hmm. So... That was that process. Mm -hmm. So I came home now, did the ultrasound and everything. And then sh the doctor was like, well, this egg looks like it's ready, you know, so you might want to try it even before you come in tomorrow to do the injection. So I went home, take the doctor's orders. And when I got up the next morning, within about 12 hours, I knew I was pregnant. Yo, yo, it's just crazy because you knew exactly that you were pregnant at that moment. Mm -hmm. Mm. I knew because I had the symptoms. The symptoms started the following morning. That was within 12 hours. Mm. How did you feel? Like, um, I don't have the, the app. I had an app on my phone and there were certain symptoms like um, a slight feeling of nausea, kind of slight heaviness, that sort of a thing. I don't remember all of them, but like, like today you'd feel about three, then tomorrow another three. I did that. It just went that way okay. consistently. So mm. having gone through what you've gone through now, you don't, mm -hmm. you, you get second guess yourself because it's, it's a very emotional journey, you know, because there are times when you think that it happened, it hasn't happened in the, in the last six plus years. Mm -hmm. And you, you cannot, like, even though you feel this time that's something different mm -hmm. and you feel a, dif a different feeling in your body and your mind, you're still not sharing it because you've been here before. Yeah. You've been here before. The fear is so strong. Mm -hmm. So I didn't tell my husband. However, I did take a different approach. I remember one of the days leading up before I took the pregnancy test, I, I took my husband's hand in the kitchen mm -hmm. and I prayed because like, I, and I was praying over newness, about the things to come, mm -hmm. the new journey of parenting. And I prayed, him not knowing that I was convicted, that I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And he stood there in agreement with me and then he just moved on. And for me, that was a powerful moment that I will not forget. Yes. But I stayed there, I didn't tell him anything until almost the time when I was about to take the, the test. Mm -hmm. And then I took the test and I got, when I took the first test, he never believed me. <laughs> I had to take three Whoa. to convince him, mm -hmm. right? I took the most sensitive one, which is the um, first response. Then I took two cheap tests and I said, see, they're the cheap test showing it too. So that means, uh, you know, and he never believed me. I thought, why? Because, I mean, we've been going through, mm -hmm. you understand? So, yeah, so that happened. And, it's so funny, um, week eight, mm -hmm. I am a prison worship leader at my church, right? Yes. So we had what we call... That's prison. two months pregnant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have what we call um, prison worship Sunday at our church, where there's basically no preaching, mm -hmm. and it's in both services. So we stand and we sing for the entire time. Mm -hmm. What we do is rotate leaders, mm -hmm. and then you go back to being back up. Mm -hmm. So when it was my time to go up, I went up and I was like, Open my big mouth and talk, oh, after six plus years of waiting, finally God came through and the people were worshipping with me. Because I guess maybe some persons had guessed. Yeah. 
and the persons who I know had more interest at heart, persons were worshipping and then other persons who probably just never know me they were worshipping. And the session was just powerful. I mean, people were out of the seats and whatever. Yeah. But then I remember when I rotated back to the back lane, mm -hmm. I just felt naked. I mean, you, should, you believe that you shouldn't have said nothing so early. It's, it's yeah, but probably I shouldn't have said anything at all until it showed. Oh. You know, I felt like this coat, like literally like somebody took a coat off of me. I just felt exposed mm -hmm. and I was looking for the exit and wishing that my husband was there because he would have left after the first service to come back for me. Yeah. And I wanted to just leave. I just felt that way. I couldn't explain. I've never felt that way before. I couldn't explain it to you. Yes. But that's just how I felt. Mm -hmm. And I knew something was up. I never said nothing though, mm -hmm. but I knew something was up. Yeah. Can you know spiritually? It was a spiritual war. Um... It could have been, mm -hmm. I know it was a spiritual situation. I don't know if it was a spiritual war per se, but it's a spiritual, it definitely was a mm. because it was revealed to me in the spirit that something was going on. Mm. You understand? So, mm -hmm. and then by the left church, yeah, I left church, went home, and by the evening, I was spotting. Spotting like blood tips up. Blood. Yeah, well, in pregnancy, what we call spotting is pink. Oh. Because there's a difference. You see, every color tells a different tale. Oh. So the darker it gets, the worse the situation is, mm -hmm. right? So when we say spotting in pregnancy, it's generally pink. So I decided, okay, I'm going to lay up, stay in bed a little bit more. And I was just hoping that it would pass. Week pass, spotting still going on. So I called the receptionist at my doctor and told her what's going on. Mm -hmm. she, they told me, she told me that the doctor said, just watch it a little bit more. Continue, it's still going on. So I said, must come in. When I went in, I went to the same doctor that did the original ultrasound. Not even a sign mm -hmm. that was a, there was a baby there, that we saw a heartbeat before. Whoa. No sign of a pregnancy. I think that was, if I had seen maybe a fragment of the baby on the screen, maybe I'd have felt better. Mm -hmm. But there was nothing. My God. And it was one of the most heartbreaking things because my husband had been in my back talking about, you look like your belly is stiff again. And, you look like a baby now grow. I mean, you know, showing up, but don't ask me. With my husband, he's like that. Like, from him opening mouth, to get scared. Because if he says something, it likely will come true. Mm -hmm. So I kept it in the back of my mind, but I was hoping and praying and begging. Because mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it after six years. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that was the result. So I took a month mm -hmm. and I mourned the loss of my child. I didn't cry. And one of the reasons I didn't cry is because I remember saying to God, I said, God, don't take me through a situation for so long and give me a child that is handicapped, sick, or anything like that. And I have to, I carry the child to church and people looking at me and saying, eh, after she waits a long, look what she gets. And something that's going to break my heart every day, I'm going to be begging and praying and worrying if my child is going to live or if he's going to die. I said, God, if that's going to be the situation, I better take him back. And I was dead serious. And I believe God works on the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. I believe in a God who is touched by the feelings of our infirmity. I believe in a God that you can express yourself to. And he understands. I don't think he judges us for expressing how we feel. Because if I say to God, this is how I feel. I say, God, I didn't have a child before. Mm -hmm. And if it is that I'm going to have a sick child, I'd rather you don't give me the child. I'd rather live without the child. And I believe God heard my prayer and he answered. So I didn't cry when I lost the baby. It was heartbreaking and it was hard to deal with. Yes. I remember my mom and her camping out for days at my door because she didn't want to come inside and be overburned. But she would just take her computer and she'd come and sit down outside just to kind of keep me company because I would just isolate myself and by myself. But I was just processing. Mm -hmm. You understand? And my husband, I think he felt it much worse than I did. Mm -hmm. It broke his heart. Mm -hmm. Absolutely broke his heart. So, moving on from there now, we went on, went back to the doctor, and I told him I wanted to go immediately. I was like, I just want to go, because I have hope now, so I just want to go. You want to get back yeah. immediately? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I want to lose momentum either. Yeah. The doctor looked at me like this, and I'm just sitting on him, just look for me. Mm -hmm. It's like, I evaluate my emotional state, you know, and I'm just didn't even say a word to me, and I'm just holding him with him, say, check me back six weeks time, man. Yeah. God. You were giving me about the time. Yeah, I think even more than just the body, I think he was giving me emotions a little time to breathe. Mm. Because he knew that it was a hard blow. Yeah. And thank God for wisdom of people set over you, yeah. So I checked him back, went through the whole process, got the tablet, put it on my dresser, and was waiting on the period to come so that I could follow the process based on the days that they, which day they say must start and whatever. So mm -hmm. I'm there, start spotting. It's not developing into a period after a week. 
So I'm like, okay, this is strange. I'm monitoring it. Anyways, my mom got sick in the same period. So mm -hmm. the day, uh, no, I took her to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And routinely, you have to take pregnancy tests because that's just part of the, the whole process. You have to take the test before you take any medication because you don't know what's happening. Right. So I just bought one since I went to the pharmacy for her. Yeah. Left her the feather and everything. Left her down the house today. Yeah. I said, because we live very close. I said, mom, I'm going to bed and come back. Step through the door. And because we live on a, a Marley area where there's a lot of stone kind of thing, when I look at the matter the doorway, it's like, you know, when you wipe your foot and the, and the whole heap of stone them come off your shoes, but I'm like, and I got so mad because I'm like, you mean some husband stepped through the door and him couldn't just sweep off the matters? And I, I was irrationally upset. Yeah. So I'm like, I take up the phone three times, call him and quarrel with him, you know? Yeah. And then I was like, no man, Renee, mm -hmm. this not look right. Mm -hmm. This, this, you, this is like, a little bit much. Yeah. So I said, what a joke. I said, sure, we're going to take the pregnancy test. Mm -hmm. So I take the test and put it on the thing like this because routinely I'm just there putting it down for God's sake. All right, five minutes from now, I'm going to throw it in the garbage. Okay. You see, before I could have come, so put it down and come. So she, I see two pink lights that come up and it's so much I was like, my God, I couldn't believe it. And I called my husband at the same time. And made arrangements to go to the gynae. They did the ultrasound and found out that everything was okay, thank God. Mm. And that was the start of that. Yes. So after that, now, probably 12 weeks or so, yeah. I started having, like, I had fever for three days. And, I, and it was in dengue season, so I was like, no, this doesn't seem right. And I'm pregnant, so I never want it, no. And then I'm on a bunch of medications. So I'm not going to take, like, a paracetamol or panadol because I don't know what interaction it can have. Yeah. So I went to the hospital and the doctor saying, like, hey, look at you. I must say, you pregnant, you have um this carriage in your body, are you gonna take Panadol, you gonna come doctor, you just a rich doctor, whatever, whatever. So anyways, they found out that my platelet count, they took a blood test, found out that my platelet count was lost, and they sent me upstairs, admit me. But after five or six days of testing me every day, everything came back normal, so they eventually sent me home. Yeah. Apparently I didn't have dengue. But found out that my platelet count was just naturally low. Yeah. That was the first admission. Come to about 21, 22 weeks. And I tell you about the goodness I got in you now. Because when you ask question, we answer. Men answer the way you expect it. I got up and I was spotting again. And I, I was like, God, because I had an appointment. This was a Saturday and I had an appointment on the Tuesday. I was like, God, yes. I must go after the Monday or I must just wait till the Tuesday. I'm not sure this year. Because some of my spotting can be normal in pregnancy. I'm never sure. Yeah. So I just leave it because I never heard a direct answer. The Sunday I went to church and I needed something in the supermarket. So I stopped at the supermarket mm -hmm. and I was about to exit. And this church sister that I've never seen in the supermarket before then, mm -hmm. nor after then, mm -hmm. bought me upon my way out. And she was like, Renee, what's going on? And I was like, if you're not about to know that, I must say it to her. But it's one of the spiritual ladies that can, she carried me. She prayed me through stuff and whatever is going on, I can tell her. Yeah. And I mentioned it to her and she said, you know, I pick you up in my spirit this morning. This morning I was in the bathroom and I just pick you up and I was worrying on your behalf. Mm. And she said, Rene, go to the doctor tomorrow. She said, don't wait until Tuesday. Go to the doctor. And I said, God, you can't clear it down that. Thank you. Mm. And I said, all right, fine. And I go to the doctor on the Monday. You see, when I went to the doctor and the doctor was like, oh, maybe it's just a hemorrhoid or something like that. When Mr. Man come and examine me, miss. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I see when the man gets up and go into him adjoining office, him don't even close the door behind him because normally him come through that door, him close it. Him pull out the file on the table and him start look through and then him start make call. call him said, don't move. And him just start make call, start make call. When he eventually came back to me and said, listen to me, don't go home. Don't go get your clothes. Don't go get anything. Send somebody for them. Go straight to the hospital. They're waiting to take you into surgery. Mm -hmm. He says, your membranes are bulging. I was six centimeters dilated, not feeling any pain mm -hmm. whatsoever. I remember you need 10 centimeters in order to push out a baby. Yeah. And it was six centimeters, which means the baby at that age Whoa. could have come out mm -hmm. because he, he wouldn't have been bulking up until the last half of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So that's an easy miscarriage right there. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to do the circlage, which basically the cervix, they stitch around it and put it together and like a drawstring bag, right? Mm -hmm and then they knot it up. So all that happened, and as I mentioned before, panic, when it comes to going under for any form of surgery, mm -hmm. me not like the loss of control right there. It's like, I, I am stressed out, anxiety, yeah. panic attack, everything. Yeah. And I'm telling you, yeah. when I go into surgery and when I can get to that point, 
I'm a little bit anxious, but there's a peace that came over me. And I remember praying, which is one of the reasons I'm here sharing this today. And I said, God, you can take me through these surgeries. I am going to tell people what you did. Share exactly what you did in these surgeries. I said, trust me to do it. I'll do it. And he took me through that surgery. Two weeks after I went home, probably, I think it was the same day I did the surgery because I told them that I was having panic attacks. Yeah. I said, please, allow me to go home and heal in the comfort of my home once everything is okay. And she said, based on the amount of bleeding, you should be okay. Oh, my doctor was mad. The only he heard he was so mad. But it's just to show because God knew what was happening with me in terms of anxiety and he allowed her to have sent me home. Mm -hmm. Right? So... After sending me home, like two weeks after that, I woke up in about three o'clock Saturday night going into Sunday morning and I saw blood. This is red blood now. Uh -huh. And I said, I called out to my husband. I said, Arthur, we need to go to the hospital. Like, no. Whoa, what a journey. Yeah. And I, we hurry up and got, I didn't even tell my mother because we went into her, we were at her house at that point in time when the pregnancy got difficult. We moved in with her and um, we just went out. Went out and they did the ultrasound, they did the checks and whatever, and they found out the circlage was still in place, but nobody knows why I'm bleeding. Mm -hmm. Sent me to the, another ultrasound across to um, a private hospital, came back over. By the time I came back up and the junior doctor started examining me, the entire table was filled with blood. Lots of blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was bleeding that badly, and we didn't know where it was coming from, and, it, well, I'm thinking that you have adult listeners, yeah. When, at one point in time, I was sitting at the admission table and I, went, I told the doctor, I need to use the bathroom. When I went to the bathroom, I screamed out because a clot, a big clot was passing and it, I thought it was like the baby was coming out or something like that. Yeah. And they had to take me to the bed and put me on um, a bedpan. It was so bad, maternity pads couldn't hold what was coming out of me. They had to put me on a bedpan until that amount of bleeding started. And all this time I feel my baby moving. Yeah. You understand? Nothing this thing was wrong with the baby. We don't know what was happening. Apparently I was still contracting because of what was happening the, the two weeks before when I had the surgery. But the baby was okay. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I'm bleeding, I mean bleeding in a pregnancy. It's not no normal bleeding I'm talking about. And the baby is still alive. Yeah. That's a miracle. Yeah. An absolute miracle that you can't explain. And my husband was panicking. And he was like, if lose this baby, not even adopted baby, no, whatever. And you know, I remember in the Bible where Jesus was going to do a miracle and he had to send out everybody in the room because yeah. the daughters were and the naysayers were there. Mm -hmm. And I remember at that point in time, I just said, listen, come out, come out of the room because I'm going to hold on to God. Yeah. And I'm going to hold on in faith and I'm going to speak faith over my child. And yes. it's good when you have somebody who speaks faith with you because my cousin-in-law was there and she's like, Renee, you speak faith over this baby. And she was there encouraging me. I said, as long as my baby moving, that's all I want to know. Mm -hmm. And I held on, even though the junior doctor was there and he was talking, oh, a baby can't survive at 22 weeks. It may be if it's 24 weeks, maybe I have a chance. And he himself was panicking as a doctor. He was straight up panicked. And this the senior doctor who had to be there to him say, um, what are you going to tell the ladies that the baby can't live or whatever, whatever. But yeah, it was that bad. All of those things were happening. So it was a whole emotional roller coaster for me. Yeah. Up until that point. But I was there. Mm -hmm. And until I was there in that section for about a week, until the doctor came over to me and said, Renee, you're now six months pregnant. You can go over to maternity. Because I wanted to come out again. It's so bad. That is where I was. I was in that very section when I lost my first baby. Yeah. And in the night, I think when I went, I was probably the only person in that section of six beds. Mm -hmm. And when you see patients are coming in, I say miscarriage behind miscarriage. I think five persons around me had miscarriages. I say, God, take me out of your soul. My God, hold your horses. <laughs> this story is just so amazing. God is just so good. Listen to me. We are going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. She na power talk. 
hey power gang remember to get your book on amazon today 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 no other day but today you can get it in kindle form and you can get it in paperback form and if you are in jamaica and you want a copy of this amazing book the crown and the cross listen to me call me at 1-876-429-6004 listen power gang you must have one of these books come on now crown and the cross So talk to me now, six months pregnant, baby yes. surviving. Yes, but last like, so I was surrounded by death in that area. Mm -hmm. I was just surrounded by death and I wanted to get out. And God understands when you're going through certain emotional situations and he responds. Mm -hmm. And he was so faithful, he knew I couldn't take that anymore. And I didn't even know I was six months at that point. I thought I was like a week behind, which would have meant I would have been there in that setting for another week. But he sent that lady to come and check and said, no, based on the ultrasound results, you can go over. So now I was in the section where life was, thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. So even though it was difficult because like persons were coming in daily and leaving daily, so you couldn't even form a bond and they wanted to keep me there for four to five months, mm -hmm. which I wasn't happy <laughs> because I don't see why God can keep me in the hospital and can't keep me at my yard. Yeah. So even though my pastor at one point in time came to me and like, Renny, I know how you stay you now. Don't fight the doctor and don't try and go home because they're only looking out for your good. And I know he was looking out for my good and the doctor's looking out for my good, but mm -hmm. you cannot understand the emotional state of a person when you're not in a position sometimes. Yeah. Can you imagine having just lost your child mm -hmm. and you're in a ward where 16 babies are? Mm -hmm. And one set of babies up there to start crying. When them stop, the next set down there to start crying. Then when they stop, the next one over there to start crying. And I used to get up in the night in a cold sweat with my heart palpitating because I don't know what's going to be the result of this pregnancy either. Yes. So you see, yes, I take the advice and I take it from, I knew it was coming from a loving standpoint. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's between me and God. Yeah. It is between me and God. And I, I said, God, you know what is happening. I said, you know what's happening to me? Mm -hmm. You know what's happening to my husband. You know that my emotional state, I in the state that I'm in, I need to be at home where I can be around persons who love me and care for me. I said, God. And then my husband and I made up our minds that if they didn't discharge me at that point, um, by the end of the week, on the Saturday, I'll discharge myself. But the Friday, the doctor came in and the nurse mentioned it to him. And he laughed. And he said, all right, can the BMI results come? That is to see, I think it's BMI, to see if your sugar levels are okay. I said, oh, she can go home. Mm -hmm. I said, Doctor, what you say? <laughs> and I just can't take out the phone and I call my husband and say, come for me. No. No, you don't know what caused the bleeding. Mm -mm. Um, some time later, what I heard when the doctor says like the, it's still some construction still going on. So and the baby's trying to come out. And normally sometimes they'll just pull the nut and let whatever happen happen. But they're trying to save the baby. But yeah. purpose can then. <laughs> so you went to him now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I had one more admission after that, but it was because it seems to have been Braxton Hicks, that, but they had to connect me to make sure that it wasn't premature labor that I was going into. So, And then 35 weeks, I went to the doctor and, oh, I had gestational diabetes during the whole of this. And I started controlling it naturally because I wasn't going to take no more insulin because I was already taking an injection. I'm afraid I need to go bad, you know? Yes. <laughs> and I had to take an injection daily. I mean, my stomach was sore. And I decided I'm not taking no insulin. So I did everything to control my diet. I changed the way I ate and controlled it from the beginning to the end. Yes. So, where was I? Yeah, my, you're back home now. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, so I went in to do... Uh, regular checkup. Yeah. This is 35, yeah. 34 to 35 weeks, right? Yes. And within, I had been losing weight during my pregnancy based on the fact that I changed my diet. Yeah. Within a sp the space of a week, I'd gained five pounds. Mm -hmm. So the doctor sent me downstairs to do an emergency ultrasound and found out that the baby's stomach was swollen. So he was saying that based on the gestation of diabetes, it's possible that it was affecting his liver or mm -hmm. some other organ. So he said, got to deliver here right now. Even though it hadn't been 38 weeks, so now the baby would have been premature and the chances of him living, you know, how that go. But they had to take him because now there's another problem. So, go in, get the surgery. To take out the baby? Mm-hmm. Had to do the C-section. I think it was two days after. Mm -hmm. And when he was born, they took him immediately to the NICU mm -hmm. because he was sick. Mm -hmm. He was, as a matter of fact, a few days 
when he started getting better is when I found out that he stopped breathing. He quit breathing, start, he turned blue, and they had to resuscitate him. Yeah. That's how bad he was. They didn't tell us all of this while we were going, thank God, because I don't think I could have managed it. Um, Cause, and I remember in the hospital, they were, I couldn't pray, like I couldn't even, the, the scriptures that I could remember, that's what I would keep repeating. And there was this one song that I would keep singing, mighty man of war, lion of Judah, when I couldn't pray. Mm -hmm. That was my war cry. And for the whole time when the baby was there, cause I didn't see him for the first day because surgery, I mm -hmm. couldn't move. And when I went down there and I finally got to see him and he was crying because he was so uncomfortable and stuff. And he eventually calmed down and the doctor explained to me that um, he's fighting, yes. right? And there may come a time when he will quit fighting. And wow. at that point, you know, what's happening? Um, about two days after that, she told me he's giving up, he's quitting. She's wow. Like he's, the, the numbers on the, the screen, that one that beep beep, it went down to like 54 and then stuff during the night. So they, they were trying to transfer him to Bustamante. And here's the thing, they say, if, there's a ventilator available at Bustamante. So there might not be a chance that you get a ventilator. God did already take care of that, but skip past that part. Um, so she said, a ventilator can cause organ damage and can cause this and that. I remember what I told you about my first child. I said, God, don't yes. give me a sick child. I said, God, not my child. Yes. And I start praying, I start sending out texts to all of my prayer warriors them that were keeping me throughout the whole process. And I text my pastors mm -hmm. and they had him up in, in um prayer meeting in we had crusade at the time, we were gift on Wallace was the preacher the night and I heard that Reverend Wallace stop in the middle of the night, in the middle of him preaching and I put on a piece of prayer based on the umption of the Holy Spirit for the baby that night, you see. Yeah. I heard afterwards. Anyways, a couple of days after that, remember my baby giving up. Yeah. And there's another baby on the ventilator in Mandeville. Yeah. A couple of days ago, that my son was outside of the NICU in the regular nursery. Oh. He never got bust a manty. He never got on a ventilator. Mm -hmm. And he was fine. Whoa. That's the power of God. Mighty God. Your faith. So, in, as a matter of fact, you went through so much mm -hmm. for wanting to get pregnant mm -hmm. and then no having to see the child fight for his life. Mm -hmm. Whoa. So now the baby is alive. Mm -hmm. How did you feel? Oh man, it was one of the best feelings ever. Mm -hmm. Even now I look at him and sometimes I can't oh, believe he's, he's three. He just celebrated his third birthday in September. Whoa. Yeah. And sometimes I look at him, I can't and believe he's it. Is he well? Oh, locks, man. Bright like what? <laughs> he's, mm -mm, no, 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 no. Never. As a matter of fact, he has hardly even had the common cold that most babies go through. He's probably had it twice. For his three years. Well, I can just imagine how you love him. Oh, yeah, man. And his father. Do you want his father? Yeah, I man. can imagine how happy his yes, father is. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Other. Because this, this, this gives others hope. Yes. And sometimes <laughs> the promise is of God is still yes and amen. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you the go process. through the process yeah. to get to the mm -hmm. promise. Mm -hmm. You are strong. I, I don't really consider myself that way, but I lean on the grace of God. You are strong, and I and I and I ask, and I believe that it's the strength of the Lord because mm -hmm. just you talking about it, I am thinking to myself like I could probably not survive <laughs> that, but you are strong, and that's why God knows what to give. Who? Congratulations on your son. You. Thank you. I'm so happy for you, and I know that your husband probably is so excited. Now, what, what what's your favorite feature about it? My son? Yes. His hair. Oh, <laughs> nice. Do you want more kids? No, absolutely not. Not one. I want to put all my time and energy into him. So now you have the promise. Mm -hmm. And oh, I'm fine God. with it. I rejoice in it too. I'm so happy to hear the end story. <laughs> because after all, you know, this is really a testimony. And this really should, this, this is a story of hope. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. I know you're pushing now. You're, 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 and you have given so much to God. You have given over your body to God as a living sacrifice from, from early. Mm -hmm. And you have been working. No, you're a gospel artist. I can assume that many. You, you, do you have a song about the situation? Um, the songs that I have are mostly worship because of the situations he's taken me through. 
Okay. So the title of the album is Lord I Love You because I'm just saying like thank so you. Have you. A new album. Yeah. So we have to talk about that. But what about your how's your dad? So I lost my dad in twenty twelve, ten months after I got married. Okay. And that was that's a, the other major situation in my life because he was diagnosed the Thursday and he died the Sunday. Oh, so you had cancer all this time? We didn't know. But it's something that's in his family. Whoa. Yeah, his mother died of leukemia. His sister died probably about a year and something before him. Um, so, question, is that a generational curse that you prayed about? Oh, yeah. We have, oh. Yeah, man, we have that under wraps. <laughs> good, 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 good. Yeah. So, um, I know oh, your father was close. He's the closest person in my life. I can just imagine how devastated he was. Can you just quickly share mm -hmm. what happened as we close? Yeah, well, um, when I lost him, I had short-term memory loss. I had anxiety. That's where the anxiety issues that I faced in pregnancy came from. So I have to be praying over and working on that every day. Short-term memory loss. Yeah, I did. I couldn't, I would be driving and you couldn't get me to not drive my father's car because it's my father's car and my dad is like this. So when he left, the, when we left the hospital, he died at UA and we went, we were going back to my I had to drive really, really slow because I'd forget when to press the brake, I'd forget when to turn. I used to have to drive with my husband in the car and say, remember to tell me when to stop, remember to tell me we're going left. And I'm making him drive, you know, because my father car. But you have to remind me, every little thing you had to remind because I couldn't remember. So, so it really but affected you? Oh yeah, man, it really affected me. How did you overcome that? Um, God is awesome. Probably, he started preparing me for it for about three years before. You didn't know? I I am not sure I knew. Like I knew, but I didn't know because what happens is that I'll get dreams that my father died and so on. I'll just get up in the morning and call him like, Daddy, how are you? What's happening? Whatever. Make sure you don't do this. Make sure you don't do this. And it used to happen like for a few, every few months in the previous three years. So it's like he was preparing me for it mm -hmm. without me knowing. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember because of that time and because I, I, he had given me like synopsis of what was going to happen. I would pray about the situation. I'm like, God, you know, I can't deal with life without mm -hmm. my father. You know, this is how I feel. I said, God, I don't know how you are going to help me when I'm to lose my father. I said, but God, I trust you. I said, put things in place. Help me. Give me the peace. Like, that's the type of way I would pray because I, I was getting these dreams. Even though I didn't expect it, but I was praying to that end. I said, God, you alone know how I can go through this without going insane. So I'll leave it to you to decide. And the pain I saw my father in, in those few days, I begged God to take him. I said, God, I'd rather deal with my sorrow than have my father deal with that pain. And I think that was, even though we're there begging, I said, God, you know, see him in a pain and whatever, make him stop. He was taking us through that so that we could let go. You understand? It was like, it made the process easier because now we're saying, God, take him. We're not saying, God, heal him. Take him because he's in too much pain. And that was part of, it sounds funny, but that's part of how we got through it because we loved him so much that we'd rather see him go than have him in that sort of a pain. And he helped us through this whole situation. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me how, because he was the rock. Mommy had this thing where she put on his grave, his tomb. You were the wind beneath our wings, because that's what he was in our family. Mm -hmm. He was the foundation of the family. So don't ask me how we're still here and we're sane. And the funny thing is, mommy went through cancer last year. She overcome? Yeah. She beat cancer. She beat cancer. Oh, congratulations, <laughs> Yeah, but God is good. Amen. Your story is such amazing. And I'm saying this, my God, the Holy Spirit, you are so strong. Mm. You are very, very strong. And I applaud you for that. Thank you. And, and I congratulate you on your son. And I hope you have a daughter. Mm -mm. But we thank the Lord for the son. The promise. Yes. I can just imagine what God has in store. Yeah. Because when you get the promise, you know, you have a lot of things that comes behind the promise. And I'm so happy that your heart is now rejoicing. Mm -hmm. Now we want to get to the album before as we are closing. We want to know what's the name of the album? Oh, you expect it to impact even this time where music is so... Mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so tell us a little bit about the album what inspired it alright so the inspiration come from all over the place I wanted oh lord Chini, you have to have more time <laughs> okay. 
the, let me tell you, you see, when I started writing, like growing up, yeah. one of the first things, if you ask me what I wanted to be, I would always say a singer. Later on, I would say probably a pediatrician, doctor, whatever. But the first thing was a singer. And I always wanted to be writing, but I couldn't get the songs. Like I might get a one line or a two line and nothing. And I was like, God, what going on here? So Mr. God, you give me the, the, the push, but I'm not getting the songs. And him just ignore me basically because basically he was developing me through these different experiences that I went through he was developing me but one day I was sitting at my desk because I was working at home from before the pandemic and I just started getting words of this song and it's from the start to the end everything just flowed within a few minutes and that from that song? that song is war it's not on the album mm -hmm. but it's a spin-off from Bob Marley's war and it's a very serious message funny enough I'm at your pastor's church and he was the first person I thought about when <laughs> when I wrote that song because it was talking about um until we get down on our knees and pray and mm -hmm. turn our hearts to God Almighty there's gonna be a war a spiritual war mm -hmm. so that's the title of that song and from that time mm -hmm. until now I've, I've been writing songs complete mm -hmm. never happened before that's another miracle, another testimony. And um, different songs from the album, there, there's prison worship, there's um, there's reggae, there's different styles of, of whatever I get, that's what I write. I don't have a specific um, way that I write or type of music that I write. So, so it's a versatile album. Okay. Ready? I love the foolishness. <laughs> so please, I'm asking you for the acapella. Give me some acapella, please. Sure. All right. So Lord, I love you is a title track on the album. Lord, I love you. Let me tell you one more time. Lord, I love you. No one before you. With my heart, my soul, my mind. Lord, I love you. No one above you. Because you are always on my mind. Lord, I love you. I stand before you, wash and cleanse in you, my mind, Lord, I love you. When me head on the pressure, I'm going to feel like lose my mind. Me just look to the hills and you call me one more time. When all my friends them gone and loneliness in my life, me just call on Jehovah. He is never hard to find. Lord, I love you. <laughs> I love that. You have such a nice voice. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for sharing that a while ago. It was very beautiful. So when will this album be released or is it released already? Yeah, it was released in November of last year. Okay, nice. Well, and the name of the album is? Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Yes. Okay, so you'll see um, all the information for the album mm -hmm. and, and they can shop it. Is it that they yes. can shop it online? Or? Yeah, all digital platforms. All digital platforms. Yeah. See, you talk, talk to them a little bit about the album where to find it you know and so forth all right so you can find it on all the digital platforms like itunes um amazon music all of those platforms you can find it um you can also follow me on youtube renee renee ministries facebook renee renee ministry or just renee renee um instagram renee renee 14 i'm not so active on twitter but it's renee renee 17 but you can find me on all those mediums there are samples of the music on instagram and facebook um, well, Facebook and mostly YouTube though, but you can find music there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you'll see all our social media handles in the description below and also on screen. And guys, what I'm asking, listen to me, this is such a strong woman. And I just ask you that you sub support her music. This is what we do. This is what I live for kingdom building. And once you're doing anything for God, I support it 100%. And I know you guys are very supportive and I'd love for you to run over to Renee Renee and everything and hear so much more. I might need to have a part two with her <laughs> at some other time because trust me, to just sit down and listen to her is captivating. <laughs> but I pray, I pray that you will just support her and go over to all her social media platforms and get it jiggy. Now, woman, I wanted to encourage some women that are, are, are watching you right now and then after you encourage them, I want you to give us a minute prior. Sure. All right, um, speaking specifically to persons who are facing fertility issues, if you have a promise, you have a God who doesn't lie. He cannot lie. He's a faithful God. And if he told you he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Children are a heritage of the Lord. The fruit of your womb is your reward. So just look forward to whatever he tells you to do. And when you're going through the process, hold on. It doesn't matter which turn the process takes. Just hold on and believe and speak faith. I remember when my son was in the hospital and i was holding him in the NICU every scripture that i could remember i would speak over him whatever scriptures you can remember just speak it over the situation speak life over your situation i shall not die it shall not die he shall not die speak over your situation and watch god fulfill the promise that he has made to you 
Let me quickly just say a prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this medium of worship because it is a medium of worship, Lord God, because we ascribe glory to you, Almighty God. We thank you for the process, Lord God, that you've given us so that we can share, Lord God, so that we can experience you, so that we can learn about you, so that we can tell others about you, Lord God. We thank you for Sheena, Lord God, as she has taken time out of her life to seek persons, Lord God, who can share their experiences, to encourage persons, Lord God, and to even encourage her own heart. I pray, Lord God, that as her gifts come each week, Lord God, that her heart will be encouraged, her faith will be strengthened, Almighty God, her walk with you will be strengthened, Lord God, and that she will push, Lord God, even when it becomes difficult to do what she does, Lord God, that she will do it all the more. I just ask for your coverage over her viewers, Lord God, and for your ministry to them, Lord God, touch them at the point of their needs, and glorify your name as we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen, yeah. Lord, I love you. Let me yeah. tell you one more time. <laughs> I love that song. It's just playing in my head right now. I want to, again, say your name. You're so strong. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm very proud of you. And I want you to do a lot. Where every time you can put out music, do it. You need to continue to let your voice be heard out. My, my wish for you is for you to go global. Yes. International. You. I yes. want your name to be known. Yes. You deserve it. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for coming. Hello, Gam. Big up yourself. You already know. I'm just still so, I'm, I'm, I feel happy. Something in that, I just feel to give God glory. Hallelujah. Because God is just so good. When you see people, not many people go through things like this and survive it. But you know, when you have some people to tell the tale, we rejoice. So if you could just go in the comment section right now and give God a mighty praise. Stay tuned. We have so much more for you. God bless you. Sheena Power Talk. Hey, Power Gang, remember to get your book on Amazon today, today, today. No other day but today. You can get it in Kindle form and you can get it in paperback form. And if you are in Jamaica and you want a copy of this amazing book, The Crown and the Cross, listen to me. Call me at 1 876 429 6004. Listen, Power Gang, you must have one of these books. Come on now, Crown and the Cross. Hey beauties and cuties, thank you so much for being a part of Sheena Power Talk Youth Link. I trust that your soul is edified, Satan is terrified, and God is glorified. If you want to be a part of this amazing move, this divine move, you can always call me or contact me on any social media handles. Don't keep that story to yourself. Let it out. Let yourself be free and free somebody else. Share your story today on Sheena Power Gang. Listen to me, Power Team. Power Gang, we are cause an eruption in the earth. We are called for revival and God has set the nigga and broke out in our life. In Jesus name let it be well. God bless you and please remember if you do want to sow, if you do want to help this ministry monetary, you can always contact me. You can always get me through cash up or other different means like Western Union MoneyGram, anything and any way you want to sow and make an offering to what God is doing i would really appreciate it there are things that we need as we develop and we trust that you will be generous to us as the lord will lead you thank you so much for making it sheena power gang you don't know how big things are going to sheena power gang and power gang gonna lead god bless you god keep you